Bueno y Valkomen para uh, Factorial Beginner's Guide with Count Evacula. Hello. <laughs> and myself, Green Luigi. <laughs> Green Luigi. Right. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Now, to begin this episode, the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to start researching modules. They will be done probably before we're finished explaining what the rest we're going to be doing. Um, Shen, do you want to talk us through what we can see right in front of us? Uh, sure. We made... Okay, last episode we made little automated areas for the production of gray and blue factories, the level mm -hmm. 1 and level 2 assembly machines. And what Abac has changed here is he, instead of having every single item brought over on uh, the logistics robots into a requester chest, into multiple requester chests, he's changed it so we only bring over a couple items into the requester chest, just the green circuits, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and then the rest is made locally via this gear factory and brought over from the main bus. And this yeah. is this is a perfect situation where you don't need to get rid of the main bus because it saves your robots so much flight time and yeah. it also saves your factory a ton of energy by that's not the having... main thing is yeah like robots like once you've built a robot pole it isn't just a static <laughs> amount of power the more often robots are recharging the more power you're drawing from your power network because the robot port discharges its batteries into the robots and then needs to fill back up again so if you've got constant and ending stream of robots needing to be recharged all the time you're drinking your power that much faster um so for things like copper plates copper wire uh, iron plates, steel plates, anything that you're producing and moving in enormous bulk, you might find it's better not to bring it over by robots, but instead bring it over by conveyor belts because it'll shift more than the robots will be able to carry. Also, if your robots are coming from a central area, now sometimes you do still want to use robots, but if the robots have to travel a very great distance, for example, on our factory, it's a very long way to where we're actually stockpiling the copper, the steel, and the iron. You know, it's almost a screen's distance on the maximum zoom level from where we're actually stockpiling. Shen is over there right now, and I mean, it's if I way. go over to where it needs to be, Shen is off the screen for me, but obviously my camera is centered. But yeah, it's a very, very long way. So. If you do find that you absolutely do want to use robots, then consider having the resources put into a provider chest nearer to the destination. Maybe you've got like 10 or 20 factories that all want to take the, the iron and you do want to give it to them via robots. Well, just pop that, uh, that iron into a uh, provider chest and let the robots pick it up from there because they'll have a very short distance to fly and thus they won't be draining their power quite as much, especially if there's a robot port right next to where they're working because they have a very short distance to where they need to start their work they do a bit of work then they go home and they haven't drained their batteries by that point so it would generally help out but the reason why to a problem oh, though there we, we are yeah yeah <laughs> so what's the problem then well the problem with this is that we've got a lot of things going into one chest and you may notice that for example iron is being stacked in here much faster than everything else gear wheels faster again uh, so yeah uh, you know a little bit faster as well we're only requesting 50 electronic circuits eventually there'll be so much iron and gear wheels in here that the electronic circuits as they're being used up might not be stacked um, might not be refilled fast but enough. It's unlikely no in this. For it. Yeah, it's unlikely in this particular case. But if, for example, we were only storing five electronic circuits, there's a very good chance that that entire inventory slot would have been emptied before another delivery arrived. At that and point, then some plates got put in their exactly. spot, and then no room for the circuits. Exactly. Yeah. Now, what we can do here to fix this is use smart inserters. Now, we've not really played with those before, but these work with the uh, the actual. Uh, wires and you can give them filter and conditional statements. This is not the logic gates of the combinators. You can't do really complicated arithmetic using these wires, but you can set up very basic filtering. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a green wire. There we go. I have now got two green wires. I'm going to want another one, so I'll make a third green wire and there we are. Now, what we'll do here is I'm going to put a smarter inserter there. We'll work on this one first, then I'll show you uh, what we would do with the uh, others as well. So I link the green wire, you put it on your cursor, you click on the smart inserter. Now it's kind of hard to see the wire. I'm zoomed right in, so hopefully it's a little bit easier. 
and then you click on a power pole. You can't. You can directly connect it to the chest itself if you particularly want to. Um, but I believe you, you, it's actually ideal if you connect it to the power pole because then a lot of different things can be connected to the power pole instead. But we'll, we'll just have right. a quick look. The circuit network you, condition. Oh, go ahead, Shen. Sorry, I was just going to say that I, I typically keep a, a stock of the uh, old wooden electric poles and just use them for a local uh, little wire network because ah, you're never going to want it to cover like a giant area. You typically want to have maybe two or three things attached to one pole right, uh, and right. the bigger poles will connect to a larger area. But we'll go ahead and we'll set that up using the electric pole just to, to show it how it works. So you yep. take the green wire, click on the electric pole, click on the um, and look at that insert green it, wire and appears. it's connected. There we are. Now I'm going to use another green wire, click on the electric pole, click on the chest. Now this wire network is running to the chest. And that's why all of the electric poles, even though they've only got one power wire going between them have often got three points for wires to connect this is why yeah the green always goes to the top red always goes to the bottom and the power goes in the middle but now we can say right this inserter you can do a few things one i could say if we had copper and steel on this belt i could say you're filtered to only work with uh, sorry uh, iron only work with iron it'll now only pick up iron and move it around but we don't need that in this particular situation you can hook it up to the logistics network we don't really need to do that, but we want the circuit network condition because this green wire is now a circuit. Yep. If in the chest there are, let's say, iron plates and there's more than... Uh, sorry, let's say if the iron plates are less than... Uh, how many iron plates do we need? Let's say 100. 100, set. okay. This will only work now if there are less than 100 iron plates. Let me see if I can uh, stimulate oh. that by taking that all out. So there we are, it's now filling up. As soon as this reaches 100, or if I do this, boom. It's no longer gonna do it anymore. So now I've guaranteed that this is never gonna be particularly full of iron. All we want to do next is do exactly the same for gear wheels. Now, because we've hooked up the wire to the pole there instead of the chest, we can just draw this wire from this inserter to the electric pole, and it's now, or should be, Part of the there same network. There we are. So I they're all the connected to the same thing. It. Ah, right, okay. <laughs> uh, right, so we want gear wheels, and again, we want, if they're less than 100, then don't bring any more in. So there we are. Now, currently, if I, uh, oop, I can't empty all those out, so what I'm going to do is I'll I'm going to drop a couple of the uh, iron go. that I've got on me. So now there's less than 100. It's filling them up, but if I put a stack of 100 back in, it should it'll stop. stop. Let's yep. watch and that stops. first, though. And that's that. It's it's that simple. Mm -hmm. But you got to hook everything up to the same colored wires. You can have red wires, you can have green wires, and they count as a different circuit network. Yeah, yeah. That's true if we had the red wire going to the chest. Now, the reason why you might want to put the green wire to a traffic pole, for example, is I could have this hooked up to multiple different chests. And they would all be part of the same circuit network. So it would count the inventories of all of the chests that Come these by. inserters were connected to. So, you know, you can, you can be a little bit more creative, creative with the way that's set up. Yeah. But that's all we need to do there. And that is now a complete system and we'll fill up. If you're wondering why these aren't running, it's because this is full of, of 100 blue um, factories. This has got 50. There's no more room. But over here, we've done much the same. We've got uh, a lot of things just being stacked up in here. Now, what this we want to do- This is just our power do... pole production, production yes. area. And it's, we, we had it all done separately off camera in, in three separate factories with mm -hmm. three separate requester chests, three separate passive provider chests. And uh, instead we've redone it and we still have the same factories, but everything's going to in into one box and everything's being pulled off of the main belt instead. So we're not, we're not using the robots for this setup because it's yep. just not necessary. Now, what I wanted to show is the, the limit of the wiring system, unfortunately. And one way that you can try and, and combat that. Now, what we have at the moment is this little setup is all, all nice and, and fairly compact. We're making all of the <laughs> How different... How many poles are in the box? Yeah, I know. There's a lot. We're making a lot of different <laughs> things. Now, obviously, what we want to do is much the same thing as we did last time, but there's going to be one limit, and some of you will probably already have noticed that one limit. Um, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and start making a lot of stuff that we're going to be using here. So, first and <laughs> foremost, we set up 
some uh, smart um, inserters there. And that's a long arm. Ah, there we go. That's that's the thing. Now you can hook this up. You can hook it up to the substation in much the same way you do anything else, like so. And then I want another one to be hooked to this one there. There we go. Right we'll do the now. Top one. Ah, we'll we'll show that in just a moment. So, in this circuit, if there are enough medium poles, let's say again 100, then. Uh, if it's less than 100, then this uh, this inserter should be working. The same over on here, less than 100, as Shen has already done. Now, as Shen pointed out, this is a long-armed inserter. We can't hook that up. It's not a smart inserter. It can't have any filtering going it's on. It's a stupid inserter. It is a stupid inserter. If I try to hook it up, you can't connect this. So you kind of have to go around the problem in this case. So, for example, <laughs> now, you don't quite need to do it this way, so... You could put two smart inserters over there and hook no. them up. No. And yeah, you could, you could. No. But you only need one. You you basically need to cut the needed ma materials to this factory. And you don't need to do all of the needed materials. As long as you prevent it from getting one of its necessary materials, it doesn't matter how much it's got of the others, it still can't build anything. So all we're going to do is we're going to hook that up as well, like so. And then we just need to say that if this box has less than 100 substations, then it is permitted to work. Otherwise, it may not. So there we so go. So what, what Avac is pointing out is the arm, the filter, the filter on it is disabled right now, meaning it'll grab anything that it's pointing at. Mm -hmm. However, it has a conditional statement saying, whatever's in this box, I'm counting on it. And if it counts over a certain number, then I'm not going to pull anything off this belt. So... It's, it's not something limited to the item that it's grabbing. It has nothing to do with the item that yeah. it's grabbing. It, it can do. You can filter things that way as well, as he said. Mm -hmm. But in this case, he's using it instead of filtering uh, what is being grabbed. He's just filtering how much is being grabbed. And he's using that as the tool to keep the box stopped from filling up. Exactly. Shen hits a uh, smack on the head what I was trying to illustrate there. These arms are only working like their condition is what they're picking up but that doesn't need to be the case. As with this arm all the way over there, it is it cares about like a, a secondary item. This could be a very long chain of factories, and still, this inserter could just be relying on the thing that's being produced by the end factory in the chain. Right. It doesn't have anything to do with red circuits. But there you go. So that's a way around a particular problem, and we've now got a reasonable amount of power. Well, we don't. We have a stupid amount of power poles. Um, you know what I would do? Also, you know a stupid amount of my inventory as well. You know what, what I would do? What? Don't I would, I would make, I would make this belt that I'm on right now. I'd make it underground, and right. I'd move this factory over two tiles to the right, and then you wouldn't have to worry about the long hand inserter. That is That's actually a do. really, really good point. That's a very, very good point. You could definitely do it that way, though it wouldn't have illustrated the point that I was trying to. Make. Exactly. We 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 did we accidentally intentionally did it this way. I don't know about you, but it was all intentional <laughs> from me. But yes, if you were wondering, why on earth has Havoc set this factory up like this? That's why, because I really wanted to show that the sort of flexibility of the circuit Can we network. do a high five? Because that was awesome. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I, I, I think this is more, more of a... No, no, you cannot press C. <laughs> there, there will be no Cs in this high five. Right, so we have researched modules. At this point, we have unlocked all of the different modules. Um... We can now look at the, the, you can upgrade the modules, they can go further along. But we do have basic modules available to us. If we have a look into our manufacturing, we can make speed modules, we can make efficiency modules, and we can make productivity modules. Shen, do you want to discuss what each module does? Yes, speed modules suck. <laughs> efficiency okay. modules suck. Product All Productivity right. modules is where it's at. The, the differences okay. are, the differences are... <laughs> I'm glad you're going to go into it in a little bit more detail. Right? Uh. <laughs> productivity modules use less resources to give you more output. Yes. If that makes any sense. Like, in, in normally in your factory, you have, let's say, three items go into a factory and one item comes out the back. Yeah. Well, in this case, three items go in, but 1.04 items come out the back. Yeah. And if you think about it, if you multiply that, every if let's say, you, let's say every single uh, automated production thing in your uh, in your factory has these productivity modules it means you're getting that that four percent bonus every time it goes through a factory 
So the more okay. factories that your pro that your raw product goes through, the more output product you get at the end of the at the end of the line. And That's it's right. so insane how much how much benefit you gain here. However, like, there are some negatives to using oh, this module. No. Yes, what, what yeah, I know it's true. Forty percent more more power consumption, fifteen yeah. percent less speed, and more pollution. Thirty percent more yes. pollution, and all of that <laughs> for just an extra four percent output. Yeah. Now, yeah. understand that obviously, how can you have one point zero four electric circuits? The way it works is that extra percent of productivity is saved in the factory and each yeah. each time it runs a cycle it adds that four percent on it and once it's run the cycle enough times to have made an extra 100 percent of a unit it makes two units and, and they get they get output or however yeah. many units we'll, we'll so show it you holds how, on to it. how it looks but yeah. basically it's it's a little bar and as the mm -hmm. bar fills up once it's done then it pops out a, a free item that's it that is right. Now, now, now the other the other modules. We should talk about the other modules. We should. What's, what's, yes. this, what's the speed module do? Right. Well, the speed module, as the name implies, just makes the factory work a little bit faster. Now, the the way that it does this is it uses a lot more power. You gain twenty percent extra speed for fifty percent more power. So if you've got a very good power economy and you, you've got massively overproducing energy, well, you could run speed modules and everything, and, and your factory would just do everything a little bit faster. Uh, Shen, do you want to go over efficiency modules? Efficiency modules are as basic as it comes. They lower energy consumption, and there's no drawback, none, other than there's a maximum, or I guess a minimum, amount of energy that any factory will use at any given time, and that's 20% of its normal. So if the normal yeah. is 10 energy per second, then you can get it down to two energy per second, and that's that. I'm very sorry about the uh, thumper-like noise in the background there. Um, Tally just woke up. And she was very itchy, so she's just sat in a cage, just scratching behind her ear and thumping the ground. So I apologize about that. But um, yes, so the efficiency module is one of the only modules, it is the only module, that has no drawback. It simply reduces the amount of energy consum consumed by the factory. Um, the only drawback is that you're not using one of the other modules. Exactly. <laughs> That's a, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> yeah. Why would you Why would you use this? Well, you use it if you want to use less energy. But Which wouldn't be a better would be a good idea the, if you were like really um, conscious about the pollution you're producing, and but you had true. very little space for solar. Then that would actually be a very good thing to use. If you're concerned about pollution, then it makes a lot of sense. Or mm -hmm. if if you'd rather focus on your factory producing items and not worry about having to expand your energy production, then. Yeah. There, go for it that's yeah. that's that's an option but i tell you what from from experience in this game i i wind up never using them like yeah. i always go to the productivity one i will agree with shen and say that the only module i ever really use is the productivity module um there are some cases where the speed module might make a bit of sense and i can definitely see the efficiency module being useful in very specific very specific circumstances where you're trying to keep your pollution footprint as low as possible and you've got very limited room for solars then this would be the best module to have in that extremely niche situation but in all others the productivity module despite its enormous setbacks like yeah, the 40 percent extra energy the 15 percent less speed and the 30 percent really more pollution nerf this thing didn't they <laughs> oh they've done they've tried it's gone through several stages of nerfing but it's still it's probably still the best one to it's have still yeah. good yeah the, the, the thing Something you have to nothing. remember is is not only is it multiply not only is it multiply multi multiplicative that four percent adds up for every single factory it goes through right yeah so if yeah. it goes through 10 factories then you get that four percent 10 times so it's 40 percent bonus at the end of the line it's not just that factories can fit more than one module yes now that so is what we want to look 4%. at <laughs> now for example um robots are fairly expensive and they go through a lot of different factories before they they end up because you can right, make all right. the the, the all these um, engines. engines and stuff all the way down the line science is also a really good one now one that i'm particularly fond of and is usually the first one that i put any productivity into is the uh, alien artifacts science i yeah, will keep that updated with the best productivity modules i've got all the way through the game so right now, this thing is using, what, 80% more energy? 
Yes, <laughs> a lot more. 80% more energy produces 60% more pollution and is 30% slower, but it Who will cares? produce 8% more um, purple science beakers from the alien artifacts that's put into it. And since someone went and got themselves killed and without a bunch of cotton candy in their pocket. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I'm not going to name names or anything, <laughs> but one of us died with a bunch of cotton candy in our pocket. And you know what? We can recover that just by throwing you enough through that productivity module. What? I the had to other do thing you can do is <laughs> you put it into factories. That's one use, but you can also put it into smelters. Now that... If you've got electric a, smelters, a, a, yes, electric smelters only. Oh, actually, can steel smelters have them? No. Ah, that's a shame. But uh, electric smelters can have productivity modules in them as well. So, for example, where we are have got a a dearth of um, copper at the moment, we are actually a little bit low on copper in in certain ways, um, or at least we were just a little bit ago. And once we start making these modules automatically considering they require five advanced circuits and five uh, electric circuits each yeah we're, we're going to be using a lot of circuits which means an awful lot of copper is going to be consumed so copper is going to start being a, a bit of a, a bit of a, a problem for us so what you can do just prop in this and the other thing is these factories because they they process such a massive quantity of the resources that they work on you see the effect a little bit sooner that little purple bar there, that is the productivity bar slowly ticking up. And eventually, once that's got to 100%, it will create two copper plates instead of one. And it's actually getting very close to it now. Uh, yeah. It will be so there in just eight, a moment. 8% every time it cycles through a product. And yep. notice that the bar, the purple bar doesn't increase only at the end of the cycle. It increases the, the entire time. So as soon oh, as the purple bar finishes, it pops, out a, it pops out a free item. It doesn't mm -hmm. wait for the, the green bar to finish. Exactly. But now this is producing 60% more pollution. Thankfully, though, it produces very little to begin with. So 60% of very little is still probably very little. Um, so that's, that's a nice thing there. If you put these things in something that does a lot of pollution already, uh, it's going to be bad times for you. But if you put them in something <laughs> that produces very, very little, you've minimized the negative impact obviously the crafting speed is a bit of a pain no matter what you put it into but you know there are certain places where these modules are less less of an issue than others now i've made a couple of all of them so that we can uh, have a little look i mean we could use efficiency module that is actually not a bad idea to put it in something like a smelter which uses extreme amounts of power so we can put the efficiency modules in there, for example, and this now uh, drains 60% less energy, and that's all. So it's gone from 180 kilowatts to 72 kilowatts, which, you know, is a reasonable reduction, honestly, I think. I'll pop that one in there. And then finally we've got uh, something, well, actually none of these are a good candidate for this, but I'll drop two, uh, a few in. We've got the speed module, so boom, boom. Nah. Oh, you're showing oh, off the different modules? Nice. Yeah, I, I made five of each one. There we go. So we've got speed modules in these ones. So your basic factory crafting speed of two with two speed modules has got 2.8, so that's plus 40%, but it does train in total 100% more power. So this is it's using 360 kilowatts instead of 180. Yeah, it's not, it's worth, not worth it, it at all for the increase in speed. Not worth it at all for this particular factory, um, the smelter. But, you know, it, it is what it is. So that's a demonstration of how those work. And in fact, I'm, I'm flat going to take these out because they are so bad. So bad for that. Uh, not good times. But the, well, uh, the energy the one's one thing not too that bad. Our belts, the one thing that our main bus is lacking is steel. So I'm putting... Per productivity modules into all of our steel smelters. And I think that's going to be the, yes. the biggest benefit for us immediately. But mm -hmm. I think AVAC touches on a very important point that the late game, what, the, we, we are now late game, by the way. We have robots, we have, yes. we have modules. This is late game. Late game in Factorio is all about copper. And it's something yes. that you, you, you really don't have to think about too much, especially if you've got a big copper setup like ours. You don't think about it too much because you're like, oh, what else? we're good on copper. It'll hit you like a ton of bricks as soon as you start doing modules and anything else that uses mm -hmm. uh, a lot of circuitry. Like, we're about to do blue circuits soon. And it, it's just so much copper. It's an insane amount of copper. To give you an idea on blue circuits, right, electric circuits use three copper cable. That's not too much, but you do, you know, it can sneak up on you if you're making a lot of them. 
red circuits require two electronic circuits and four copper cables, so that can definitely catch you off guard. Blue circuits, 20 electric circuits and two advanced circuits each. Once you start making blue circuits, and you're probably going to want to be making them in a reasonable amount once you do want them, it is going to... It'll make you weep. You you thought you were reliant on <laughs> iron up until that point, and this is just going to change your mind completely. So, on that note, um, probably before the next episode, or perhaps after the next one, we've still got a little, uh, a few little things that we can do about the factory. But we are seriously going to have to have a look into expanding our copper um, in copper ore. We've got yeah. a couple of nodes, you know, in areas where we might want to expand to anyway, so it makes a little bit of sense. For example, there's a reasonable copper node just to the, the south of New Ironton, which we could even introduce into New Ironton. We could make a train that would be able to, um, using smart inserters, deliver copper to the copper smelting area and iron to the iron smelting area. And that might be worth setting up just to illustrate how it's done. We've also got a very large uh, copper oh, that copper in area. the west looks so good. Yes, yes, exactly. So, so there's <laughs> lots of different places that we can go from here. But to uh, to wrap things up, I'm going to continue working on the uh, the modules, and we're going to research all the way up. To, well, we're not going to research the last ones because, frankly, we don't have that much alien artifacts. But I'll research all of the ones before it. But probably in the near future, our next bit of research will be actually looking into our armor, and by that I mean like you know cyber armor. We're going to become Sarah. Iron Man, both of us. Two well, Iron Mans yeah, at the same we're, time. We're going to have local power sources. We're going to have mm -hmm. local laser defense. We're going to have all sorts of amazing stuff. We can even we have fly, our own though. robot. We don't fly robot like Iron Man. No, yeah, you don't fly true. like Iron Man, but you can carry a lot of drones around who can, like, you know, strip a forest in seconds. I think that's pretty cool. That's yeah, that's pretty cool. It's it's fun to watch too. Yeah. Okay, but that's going to be it from us. Thank you very much for joining us. We hope that this episode has been entertaining as it has been informative and if you have any comments then do leave them down below and we will do our best to answer your questions but until next time take care everyone ta-ta